Sometimes you come home with an image that you're really proud of. Like me and this one here. It is incredibly sharp and has a mad depth of field due to the 600mm lens right here. But the thing is I can't really pronounce squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. I find that super difficult, so let's call it bushtail. The problem with that image is that it's kind of flat, the colors are somewhat boring, the light is somewhat boring and the composition is also not quite right. So let me take you into Photoshop and let's bring this image from good to outstanding. So next time you take a picture of a bushtail or any other animal, you know what to do to make it stand out. Also by the way, if you want to learn how I take my photos in general, I'll send you this free ebook if you want. More to that at the end of the video. So let's start by dealing with the composition here. Now for that we simply hit C on the keyboard and start to, you know, place it as we want it. Now usually people would just put it like here and that, you know, looks okay, but it doesn't really make it super interesting. I think if you want to make it interesting, we can definitely, you know, do something else here. So instead of placing it in the center, let's place it on the left side. So I'm just going to bring in the left side until I get a feeling that it's kind of alrighty. So maybe something like this doesn't look bad. And also let's bring in the top a little bit just to close the photo on the top a little bit. Maybe something like this is alrighty. Once done, let's hit enter. Now the cool thing is now that on the right hand side we have space, which is where we want to add the light later. So this composition is going to be much more interesting than just to dead on bang it into the middle of the photo. Next, and that's always important with any photo time for a cleanup. So if you look right next to our little bush tail friend over here, there's a little, a little dirt smudge. So for that I'm going to create a new layer by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift and N on the keyboard. Hit J to get my spot hitting brush tool or my brush tool and just simply go over it to make it disappear. Boom. Nice. As far as I can see, that's the only little blip that we have here. Maybe there's another one up here. Let's just go over that and make that disappear as well. Beautiful. We'll take it. Next on the agenda is the tree. I mean, the tree is nice because obviously our bushtail is sitting on it, but it's a little bit too bright and therefore it is taking a lot of the attention away from our friend. So let's fix that. For that, let's create a curve adjustment layer just like that and bring it down a little bit, maybe to something like this. Now, once we have done that, let's also bring down the total highlight a little bit. And yes, you can see in the tree in the background, it's going to lose a little bit of structure, which is good because then people, you know, will look less to the tree and more to our squirrel friend. So I'm going to bring it down to maybe something like this. So if we have a look at the before and after, of course, we have it everywhere now. We don't want that. So let's use a brush to paint that in. I'm going to hit Command or Control and I on my keyboard to invert what we have just done. And now with a white brush, I'm going to paint in our effect just onto the tree in the background. Now, of course, be careful not to go over the squirrel. I'm going to be right kind of quick here. But of course, in your own photos, make sure you take your time. We can also go a little bit over the lower left hand corner just you know to take attention away and make it dark and nicely fitting with the rest of the image. There we go. Now if you look at the before and after it's clear that the tree is much less bright and therefore the attention is much more on our little bush tail friend though. So let's start to work on the overall light situation. What I want to do is on the top right I want to create some sort of a light source let's say. That's not just going to make the image overall more interesting but also of course add a bit of specific lighting to our subject which is important. So we'll do the same thing again. We're going to grab a curve adjustment layer. So we're going to head to our adjustments, hit curves and now bring it up. Bring it up to something like this maybe. For now it doesn't matter really what the value here is because now we're going to have to add that into our photo and just to the top right corner. The way we do that is just like before. I'm going to hit command or control and I to invert my layer mask and therefore hide the effect. Now I can hit G on my keyboard to get my gradient tool and I'm going to be careful to select the circular gradient tool and not the linear one. And now I can simply start from the top towards the center of the photo to draw my, my light source basically. Now you have to find the value that really fits your photo. So I'm going to go with something like maybe something like this for now. The cool thing is that you can always come back to your adjustments, especially these gradients and change them later, which I find actually quite handy. So now that we've placed our light, so to speak, we can now decide how strong do we want the light? Do we want it, you know, just a little bit? No, no, we want it proper. So let's bring it up to maybe something like this here. So this is cool, but the image won't really pop until we also create some dark areas. So what we want to do is in the lower left hand side, we want to create some darkness basically. So the attention is really on our bushtail friend though. So what I'll do, I'm going to hit Command or Control and J on the keyboard, which basically duplicates the curve adjustment we created before. And now I'm going to hit Shift and Backspace to fill it with black again. I'll now bring the curve down a little bit. So maybe do something like this. Doesn't matter. We just need to see it for now. And once again, hit G to get my, my circular gradient tool. Now, just like before, I'm going to draw in that particular circle, but I'm going to hit the reverse button right here. 
And you can already see what that does, because now we have control as to how far we want the darkness to reach the center of our image. So I'm going to go with maybe something like that. Once we've placed it, we can go back to our curve and make sure we bring the darkness up a little bit so it's not too crazy. Maybe something like that. And whenever we are unhappy with our gradient, we can just go back and fix it as we like. So maybe, uh, maybe something like that is not too bad. As always, find a balance that works for you. Like, I think this is okay for this image. But I think we can make the lower left a little bit darker even. So what I'll do, I'll create another curve adjustment layer, but now we know how that works and bring it down a little bit, maybe just to something like that. Now I'm gonna hit Command or Control I again to hide that, but instead of selecting the circular radi gradient tool, I'm gonna to select the, uh, the words, the linear one. So now I'm just gonna bring that up to something like that, making sure we deselect the reverse because we don't want the reverse in this case, and just place it so that we get a little bit more darkness in the lower left-hand corner. All that darkness will guide the eye of the viewer into the center of the photo, which is where our subject is and our nice, interesting light point. Cool, looking good, I like it so far. Now comes an important part. We need to make sure our bushtail friend is standing out way more than he does right now. For that, we're gonna give him a little bit more texture if you want. So we're gonna need to create what is called a stamp visible, which is basically just copying everything that you can see onto a new layer. And you can do that by simply hitting Command or Control, Option, Shift and E on your keyboard, and you get that stamp visible here as a layer. With that, we're gonna to head to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter. Here we wanna to go to the Effects section on the right hand side and now work especially with the texture as well as the clarity sliders. So check it out, if we increase the texture to maybe let's say 40-ish and the clarity let's say to maybe 20-ish and I'm only looking at the squirrel to decide when it's good enough. If you look now at the before and the after and you focus your view on the squirrel, you'll see that it basically stands out, it pops a little bit more because I've got a little bit more contrast as well as texture, which is nice. So let's hit OK on this one. But of course we don't want this everywhere. So now let's pop a layer mask onto that and then invert that layer mask by hitting Command or Control and I. And now with a white brush, we can paint our effect onto our squirrel. I said it. I'm also gonna go over the tail because you know there's some nice texture in that one as well. Nice and slow and something like that. Now, if you look at the before and the after, it is a slight difference, but it makes all the difference for the thing to pop a little bit more. Now, there are two important steps left. The first one is finishing the light and the second one is working on the colors. For the light, we create yet another curve adjustment layer. So we're gonna to head to adjustments and to curves. And now we're gonna look at our histogram in the top right hand corner. Basically that shows you how many bright and dark things you have in your picture. For example, if I make everything very dark in my photo, you can see that all the information on the left hand side, which represents the dark areas in your photo. Whereas if I make it really bright, everything is gonna to move to the right hand side and therefore symbolize of course the bright areas in your photo. The thing is, if we look at the histogram in the image right now, the right hand side is sort of, there is a gap, right? That means that nothing is really bright or in other words, it's flat. So what I'll do in the curve, I'm gonna grab the lights, so the highlights and drag them towards the left. And with that, I sort of determine what is the brightest stuff in the photo. And as I do that, as you can see, the histogram is gonna to move towards the right because it gets brighter. And if you look at the photo, look what a difference that makes. Oh my God. So we can really tune it up to maybe something like that. I don't wanna go overboard, but something like that can definitely work. The same thing is important for the dark areas in your photo. So I'm gonna use the dark point on the curve and bring it a little bit to the right. And that will make the darks a little bit darker and therefore make the image pop a little bit more. Just make it less flat, maybe something like that. Now look at that one change we made and the difference in the photo. It is absolutely insane. I love this kind of stuff. Now for the final light touch, notice how the head of our buddy here is very bright. So what we can do as before, we're gonna create a curve adjustment layer and bring it down a little bit. I'm just looking at the head of our friend here and I'm also gonna take down the highlights in the head a little bit, just like this maybe. Now I don't want the whole head to be dark and especially not the whole photo. So let's hit Command or Control and I on the keyboard and use a white brush to bring that in, but more on the left hand side than on the right hand side as the light is naturally falling from the top right. So I'm just gonna go over this side and make it a little bit darker, just like that. You can also go a little bit on the, the body itself here because it is in the dark or in the darker areas. So why not make it a bit darker? And of course, also a little bit on the right hand side just to get that glare away from the head. 
Now look at that difference. It's really gonna make the, the head sort of fit into the lighting situation that we have going on here. Now to visually close the image a little bit more, I want to create a really dark outline around the edges, so a simple vignette. For that, we could do it manually, but I'm a lazy person. So let's create another stamp visible by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift, and E, and simply go back to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. Here we're gonna use the vignette slider and just add a slight vignette, ever so slightly, nothing crazy, but maybe something like that. Also, we're gonna make sure we preserve the highlights so nothing is gonna be darkened out in the area of our light that we have added. That would be kind of sad and useless. So once we have that slight vignette, we can simply hit OK. And that's basically just closing the image and drawing the eye to the center of the photo much more. The last step is to work on the colors. I don't know if you can see that, but probably not because our eyes get used to color, but there is a lot of red tones in our scribble friend, I said that again, as well as the tree in the background. So we kind of want to blend that a bit more with these green tones that are going on here. So for that, we're going to go back to adjustments and we're going to create a color balance adjustment. Now the tree in the left hand side of our scribble friend here are quite dark. So what I can do is I can simply go to the shadows and now we're going to add into the shadows a tiny bit of cyan or cyan as uh, it is being said in English properly, a tiny bit of green and a tiny bit of blue, maybe something like that. Of course, you can play with you know, your particular photos and make sure that it looks adequate. But the difference you can only see in the before and the after, if you look at the tree now, there is a certain red color now, and now there is not, a, well, there isn't a certain red color now. Also, the temperature of our bushtail friend though is coming down a little bit. It just blends more with the rest of the photo and therefore just make it look more uniform in colors. Now, the last step color-wise is to get rid of this intense green and the leaf in the background right here, as well as between the legs and down here, because it's distracting and we don't like distracting things. So for that, we're gonna to go to adjustments and create a hue saturation layer. Here, we're gonna to head to master and select the greens. Now pump it up like mad just to see what we have currently selected in terms of color. I can now move this slider around to make sure I only select this intense green. Maybe something like that. We can enhance our selection by moving around this sort of separate slider right here, but that's already not too bad. So let's bring our main sliders back and let's just bring down the saturation. Looking at the leaf in the background, maybe do something like, maybe something like that. Now we still affected a lot of other random areas, so let's hit Command or Control and I and make sure to paint that in with a white brush just over that leaf and everything should be fine. Same with between the legs right here and also just a little bit down here. So if you look at the leaf in the background, it's now much less dominant. It's just a little softer green that also blends beautifully with the, with the background itself. So we can definitely leave it here because it looks good. And there you have it, friendos. Look at that before and after. If we go to the before, and the after, and the before, and the after. Now remember what we used was actually super simple. A couple of curve adjustment layers, a hue saturation layer, a color balance layer, and that, that was basically it. So next time you find a worthy animal, you know what to do now. Also, if you want to learn how I take my HDR photos and how I sort of basically edit them, there's a free ebook, I wrote it, it's for you, you can have it for free. Just comment below the video and you know tell me where I have to send it. Don't comment with your email, just you know write down that you would like to have it and I'm gonna reach out to you. Now, for me, I'm going to prepare the next video. Maybe this particular monkey friend here, or maybe our little hummingbird friend right here. God, I love wildlife photography. And I'll see you in the next video.